Throughout the life of video games, storage media has changed often. But with recent years, no matter how you bought it, installing it has become mandatory. When it comes to modern gaming though, storage is paramount, no matter if all digital or physical, or likely the middle ground. If you have a PC or console from the past 10 years or more, installation is a necessary evil. But until this generation, it's mostly been size that is important. With the SSD boom, now we feel the need, the need for speed. Integral sent me this drive for review, and for your chance to win one, stick around till the end. With the recent surprise Steam Deck OLED update at the end of last year, one thing can still be lacking and expensive, that SSD inside. The cost scales heavily from the 256GB base model to the expensive 1TB one, one, but you can get better size, speed and value from a third party upgrade. UK manufacturer Integral have decades of experience in PC and console hardware, memory, and they sent me their Gen 3 one terabyte SSD for the Steam Deck, although they also offer a Gen 4 model and larger 2 and 4 terabyte options, including PS5, PC, Mac and laptop upgrades. Now the drive itself is neat and tidy, with a simple PCIe connector that fits the deck perfectly, and it can be used in many laptops, tablets and handhelds with a suitable socket. Prices range from £35 to £69 for this 1TB model, read and write speeds of 3.4GB and 3GB respectively, putting it above the base Steam Deck SSD, in addition to the 1TB model here swapped with the base 256GB LCD Steam Deck. It will offer the same storage and potentially better performance than the OLED 1TB model for significantly less, and certainly over the 256GB base model you see here. So, let's put that to the test. The first hurdle is we need to pop open our Steam Deck and replace the internal but modular SSD. Remember this is going to void your warranty and it is at your own risk, but it's simple and the Steam Deck is certainly not going anywhere soon. Ensure you have a clean space to work, storage for the screws, something to protect the screen when face down and earth yourself and the desk before you start, just in case. Shut down the Steam Deck fully. Pop out any SD cards. Using an M1 screwdriver, remove the 6x9 and 6x5 screws from the back, holding it all together, noting the longer 9mm and the outer and shorter 5mm on the inner. Then with a plastic foam prying tool, gently push the clips apart and work along the unit. Take care around the triggers and power buttons to apply even but not heavy handed force. It will easily just pry off as you go. Once off, you can now access the heat and interference shield with the warranty screw covered by foil tape. Three screws later and liftoff is achieved, revealing the small M2 drive. The final screw removed, this will now pop up the drive, simply pull out and place in storage or close to your screws. You can even use the old packet the new drive came in, which is probably the best way. The new integral drive comes with heatsink on top and simply clicks in a line to the socket and pushes down and secured by that same screw. Now reverse the whole dismantle guide with those shielded screws, noting the aligned caddy holes that go through the outer case and sandwich it all together. Now align the rear case into place, push around the frame starting from one side, working either clockwise or anti-clockwise and push gently until it clicks together. Simple. Finally, replace the external screws using the balanced top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right, center approach to ensure even pressure and stability is achieved. And there you have it, and you're ready to start the next phase. We now need to reinstall that Linux OS and that Steam OS to resume gaming. Simply go to Steam and download the re-image file from their site and grab a USB drive. A minimum of 8GB and using either the noted Windows or Linux tools, decompress the image onto the USB to make a bootable drive to resume. With the Steam Deck turned off, hold down the volume down and power button with the Steam Deck in a caddy with the USB inserted or a suitable USB-A to USB-C converter into that USB-C port. 
If not in a caddy, then ensure your Steam Deck is fully charged before you start. However, I recommend a caddy so that you have it powered throughout and leave that USB stick in the caddy port until you're finished. It will boot from the drive, or if you enter the drive boot menu, use the USB as the boot sector option. The pack strap install script will run and take approximately 20 minutes to boot you into the Arch Linux Distro OS. From here, choose the Restore Steam OS icon and then allow this to run. Once complete, it will prompt a reboot. Choose Yes and pop out the USB. The Steam Deck will now reboot to the Steam OS Welcome as per your factory shipped unit. Set up your Wi Fi accounts, log in, and you'll now see a clean install with no games. Pop in your SD card and games, and you'll be ready to play. And you can now re download or pull from your local PC if active to save time and bandwidth. A godsend for me, and surely for yourself if you're doing this same swap. We're now good to test what we had before and what we have now and see what benefits it offers. So we're now good to test the stock drive to the upgrade and see the benefit it offers over that four time storage increase. Now theoretically we have almost 80% higher read speeds than the stock drive, so the potential is high. My methodology is simple, with some caveats and limits on the increases we will see. The specific boost offered here are data seek, latency and ultimately bandwidth, which can improve loading, streaming and even performance. I ran three tests of loading or fast travel on the stock drive and then the upgraded integral drive. Of the three, I took the fastest result for each and compared these to each other. This gives us a higher level of accuracy on the results and the likely best case scenario. Now newer games and certainly Unreal Engine 5 and Sony first party titles will likely see the biggest gains and that is true with Spider-Man Remastered, giving us a minor 2.5% increase. Nothing really of huge merit and in reality most would not notice a second or less difference between loading, but the reality is it is there, as small as it may be. Taking a faster loader in Resident Evil Village we see our first big gain, albeit again minor. Just under one second faster gives us nearly 10% improvement over the stock drive. Hardly something to shout about, but certainly increases in favour of that integral drive. Now, older games are likely not going to be limited by the drive itself, and with Metal Gear Solid 5, we see this come to fruition, with the stock drive being slightly faster within two frames, so margin of error, that were close to identical or edge cases, which may crop up from time to time in certain older games, but do expect little benefit for older games with this faster drive. <music> After all these tests, the biggest of all by far was Insomniac's SSD Punisher Rift Apart. Just over 49% increase, cutting the load down by approximately 3 seconds compared to the stock drive 6. Another new title that demands an SSD is Motive's Dead Space Remake from EA, giving us a delta of just over 2 seconds, but a smaller 18% gain to the integral drive bringing the average boost for the new drive to circa 10% increase across a selection of titles. Not bad, and far more than I had expected, but what it does show is the results and gains will differ on a title by title basis. Many big loading games may see significant gains, and as my graph shows, these can be small to medium size improvements. So what about performance gains then? Well, these are going to be very limited, but there were a couple of games that sprang to mind for testing, and we again lean on those sleepless developers. We're going to a dimension where I always win, so you can finally know how it feels. 
Running through the portal rift across both drives at low settings, we see a gap open up early over the stock drive. Using the second run for each, as this was the fastest to complete for both drives overall, performance is better on the integral drive. Due to a more consistent data feed, we can hit a brief 60 FPS high, whereas the stock drive only hits 47, due to still streaming and decompressing data most of the time. The average ends 15% faster overall to the integral drive, although the third run on the factory drive was slightly faster and only 10% slower on average FPS, but it was slower overall to complete the run. And this is where the drive boost comes in. We see portals opening quicker and the void dimension sections being shorter. The performance is higher overall as the data is being streamed faster, so it has less stutters when it hits with chunks of data to decompress, which happens more often on the stock drive. Presented in higher frame spikes, 99 milliseconds versus 116 on the stock drive. Over the one minute or so run, we end the sequence two seconds faster on the integral drive with better performance. Highlighting when data is paramount, the faster drive will benefit, but this is likely the most extreme test we have so far. Both speed and performance can see increases with the faster drive, mirroring my previous test on this game with SD cards, mechanical drives and such. Testing Spider-Man Remastered brings us back to Earth though, and we see margin of error performance differences again, as this aligns with the game being more GPU and CPU limited. But in my tests on this game, we do not see any substantial boost over just the size and loading speed increases. We need more backup! 1032, Times Square, officers under fire! Bring in the hammer. The cost of storage has dropped significantly, however the price shouldn't be the only factor. Quality and speed are vital, and here Integral impressed me. We have superior speed and over four times the storage space with this 1TB Gen 3 model. And although gaps to the included 256GB SSD the Steam Deck ships with are not transformative, they offer tangible double digit increases depending on the title for great value. The improved use is another factor, over double the storage of both SSD and 256GB SSD card means I can keep more games local and active, along with freeing up that SD card for even more storage in just in case moments. But the Steam Deck will often be limited by the software itself, the game engine, the CPU, the RAM speeds and even if it's a Gen 3 or Gen 4 PCI port, hence why I'm testing the Gen 3 here. Therefore. Only when pure data throughput is the limit will we see such gains, and titles such as The Last of Us Remake are limited mostly by CPU and memory speeds over pure SSD bandwidth, unlike Rift Apart and Dead Space, which are more sensitive to drive latency and speeds. For £69 or $70-ish, you can triple your current storage and improve game loading, performance and your installed library for the price of a new game. As they say, sometimes the best things do come in small packages and this integral drive has become just that and is now a highlight in my Steam Deck upgrade recommendations for 2024. So, as mentioned at the start, there is a good chance and simple way to win yourself one of two drives from Integral. Simply hop over to the Integral YouTube channel, the link's in the video and below, and subscribe to them. Now pop in a comment down below this video from the account you subscribed with, and I will review the comments and either make them funny or entertaining, and the one that hits both of those areas will be picked to win one of the drives. I'm giving you all around two weeks to put your comments in the section down below, so it gives everyone a fair chance of entering the competition, and I will contact you directly to organise shipping. And remember, you can use this drive in the Steam Deck, a laptop, a PC, anything you want that accepts the socket. We have two drives to give away, so be sure to hit the subscribe button for both their channel and mine, and comment down below. And of course, good luck to each of you. And that's it for another deep dive into technology, hardware and gaming speed. If you like what I do here, then remember I am self-funded and independent and you can help me by sharing, liking and commenting down below and maybe even win something if you do. Anyway, that's it. I'm out, but I'll catch you very soon on the next one. I'm sick of bugs.